I love three things. Writing code, explaining my English accent and asking questions no one else does, like why does this event exist? So I made a video about everyday tech things you use without thinking and the strange stories behind it. Oh wait, looks like an important email here. Another spam. I bet you know where spam came from. Yes, it's named after canned meat. In a Monty Python sketch, Vikings chant spam, spam, spam to the point of absurdity. Egg and spam, egg, bacon and spam, egg, bacon, sausage and spam, spam, bacon, sausage and spam. Early internet users adopted the term to describe excessive repetitive messages in line. So yeah, your inbox is full of memes from the 70s. By the way, the ad symbol wasn't made for email. Long before the internet merchants in the 16th century used ad to mean at the rate of. You might find an invoice saying 7 widgets at 2 coins each. That's it, a simple shortened. Fast forward to the 1970s, Ray Tomlinson, a guy working on ARPANET, sort of pre-internet, needed a way to send messages between computers. He chose ad to separate the username from the host, simply because it wasn't used in names. That's how history got made. Today billions of people use ad daily, thanks to a merchant's doodle and a programmer who just didn't want conflicts with usernames. Interesting how he even knew about this symbol. Maybe his great-great-great-grandpa was selling keyboards. Yes, like this one, with that caps lock button nobody asks for. How often do you hit it by accident right before typing your password? Turns out it's a holdover from typewriters. The shift key would physically shift the carriage to type uppercase letters. Caps lock, it locked the shift so you didn't have to hold it down. Modern keyboards kept it for tradition? Spite? No one's really sure, but it stuck around outliving the dinosaurs of hardware past. Same with the space bar. It used to be a literal metal bar you'd press to insert a space. It spanned the entire width of keyboard. When keyboards went digital, the bar became a button but the name stuck. Unlike the next thing. It was named by King Harald Gromson. Any guesses? Bluetooth. This man had a nickname Bluetooth. Maybe he just liked blueberries. There are plants in Denmark and Norway. He united the tribes there, so engineers thought it was fitting name for a protocol designed to unify communication across devices. Also, the Bluetooth logo? It's a bind rune combination of Harald's initials in Old Norse. And these runes? They mean hello world, every developer's first tutorial. It was first used in 1972 internal Bell Labs tutorial to demonstrate syntax. It stuck because it's short, friendly and people like to say hello. You could print anything, but nothing says start of something new like cheerful greeting. If you're gonna print it, I'm sure you'll use the QWERTY keyboard, the one that was designed to slow you down. It's not optimized for speed, it's optimized to prevent mechanical jams. The original typewriters would jam if common letter pairings were typed too quickly, so the keys were spaced out. QWERTY was born out of a mechanical limitation and it stuck around because we all just got used to it. But what if instead of slowing down, you want to cancel something? Or just undo? You press Ctrl Z. Pity it doesn't work in real life. But why Ctrl Z for undo? Why not Ctrl U or Ctrl Backspace? It all goes back to Xerox Spark in the 1970s, the same lab that invented the graphical user interface. Designers decided that putting Z next to XC and V made sense. Cut, copy, past, undo. Convenience over logic. So yeah, your muscle memory is just some designer's hunch that Z feels right. We live in a world built on a strange defaults, legacy buttons, forgotten reasons, and code no one understands but everyone copies. 
Next time you hit caps lock by accident or undo a disaster with Ctrl Z, just remember, most of this wasn't designed, it just happened. And we kept it. Thank you for watching, like, subscribe and stay in tech.